Hey guys, you're the Hard 1995 here. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and wonderful evening. And if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Uh, so I just want to talk about Vanquish Show in the upcoming uh, set. Is it going to be good? Is it still at the same peak? Is it still the same? Honestly, guys, I think uh, Vanquish Show uh, stays the same. If the ban list doesn't drop soon, or I would say, I guess in my deck particular, if some of women doesn't get hit, I don't really see potentially changing. I guess more tech cards, like I might change, like, you know, maybe evening matches or maybe drop some of them from main and play more hand traps. Honestly, the, the format's kind of stale right now to a point where I haven't even changed my deck since the ICS. Yeah, so like, honestly, I didn't don't think you really need to. Even with all these new random decks, like Runic Stun or anything else, like... I mean, shift a B to an extent anyway, so, and Bell, and Ash, so, if I'm not drawing those cards, I'm probably losing that game anyway, so, uh, what I think of Vanquish Show in the potential future is, I believe it's still the same, it won't change at all, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep making videos like this each set that comes out, because I wanna make sure the people that watch me for Vanquish Show don't give up hope on it, so I was, uh, if you guys do watch my Tempire video, I am experimenting Vanquish Show Tempai. Uh, I haven't made a deck list yet, but I just kind of want to put the ID in people's heads, right? So the synergy with Tempai and Vanquish Show particular is the fact that you can make uh, Synchro 7s really easily. So you can make Black Rose, you can make Power Tool. Um, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. Again, don't quote me on that. I am still learning Tempai as I go, but... Uh, the fact that you can actually, like, do stuff with them. Also, you can uh, make, like, 10s easy. You still play Fenway. You still play, like, Borga. You probably play, like, a one-off Borga. If, you, if, if you're if you going to the Tempai Vanquishol out, right, you would play, uh, you would drop a lot of Vanquishol cards. It's like my Sankai Vanquishol. That you only play, like, Stake Your Soul literally... Three Rosens, one Jarwong, like maybe one Caesar, one Borga, one Mad Love, and like one Snow Devil, and one Pentower, just for like to make up the different names as your like archetype. And you try and more rely on a, the Tempai more than the Vanquish Hall, right? That's what I think. Uh, Vanquish Hall's in a weird spot as usual that. Sank if Sankai is still the best deck, like, Vanquish Hall still struggles, like, it still loses to a lot of different decks, uh, it's still a good work strategy, just because a lot of people just don't know what they do, and don't know really how to counteract it, like, if you don't know how to verse a deck, how do you beat a deck, right, that's why I make videos that you can either beat Vanquish Hall, or you want to join the gang, the Vanquish Hall gang, you know, I can explain each card, and in my last combo tips, it did really well, thank you guys for that, that it's over 1,000 views, which I can't believe, because I just made that out of like, you know, just using my brain, I'm like, oh, I just made that video. Uh, so what I think, Vanquish Show, am I going to still play? Yeah, I'll probably still uh, play Vanquish Show here and there, like, I do like playing the best decks, so I played Snake Eyes, obviously, I play, I'm going to play like Tampai when it comes out. I am going to play like Unchain Your Bell too, I want to try that out. Uh, I Again, I like testing all different decks, that's the whole point of playing different decks, is to test different decks out to, to understand what each deck does and to understand how to beat each deck. So I did see in a lot of comments of the Wild Vanquish Show video that uh, how do I side and what do I do and how to do it. So I'm going to give you a little example here. So let's say that I was going first, right? And I'm siding to go first here. So how would I take my card tower? How would I adjust? Let's say, let's say you can't afford fast, right? Let's just say you're playing something like, you know, uh, another fog game, right? Or like another card. Let's say you're playing Forbidden Chalice because that's a budget option. I would take, I would put Chalice in and take like one Caesar out, one Borga, one Jawong. Because, don't get me wrong, these cards are good going first. Like these cards are really good. But if you're putting more like Fodgates or like things to do, 
even like maybe not taking a second Jarlonger, maybe taking a hand trap that's not good in the format, or maybe taking Drendel, or like Rise Hard, depending on it. Depend again, each situation has its different causes, right? But most of the time, if I'm going first. I would keep it like this because of this deck list, right? But if I was going f first and I'm going like, I'm siding for first, I would put Chalice in, Anti Spell, you know, Tikibu, depending on the matchup. Again, let's say I'm versing Snake Eyes, right? I'll put some of them in an Anti Spell in because those cards were beats, uh, Snake Eyes. And let's say you, for some reason you don't have access to these two cards, you play Chalice or you play. You know, another card that could stop them, right? So, the side patterns I normally would do is like take a Caesar out, take a Borg out, take a Jarong out, because that's again, those cards don't do anything for you going first if you don't draw Razen. That's a, that's kind of the problem of the deck sometimes, right? They only do something if you draw Staker Soul. Because they are like a monster. But sometimes you can't always rely on just having that. You gotta you gotta have backup options. Like some, there's some games that I haven't drawn a Vanquishall monster, but I have like you know my Fight Gates to lean on, or I got my hand traps to stand by on. Always sitting with a Fenway sometimes. Like sometimes that's how the deck is. But if you do open Marzen, you got so many advantages of doing that, right? And especially if I, let's say you can afford Foss. I Foss and put d in, or you put like another good trap card in. It's not the worst going first either, because you get hand trapped. Let's say you get hand trapped, right, on your Stake Your Soul, when you reveal Jawa. You can set your Snow Devil, right, off the Foss, and try and play. Let's say you open a hand of Caesar, and Ball Guy, and Jawa. You can set uh, off Foss, you can just set Snow Devil. That's why you can, honestly, maybe in the future you guys could play two Snow Devil because Snow Devil is just a good card to unbrick your hand. It's one of those cards that just unbricks your hand. So this video is kind of like where I'm going for the next format, how I'm going to do it. So honestly, if I wanted to try a cool thing, I could try Tenpai with uh, Vanquishop. I will make a whole separate video about that though. I won't go too much into detail of that right now. Because this video is basically what what is my thoughts on Vanquishol going forward? What is is the deck gonna be good still? Is the deck so rogue that it's just impossible to play? I think is still good. Like that's of course that's my biased opinion. I I'm sure you've seen so many people's videos about my top YCS is like, how did he top? And how did he get there? And it's like if you know your deck well and you play very well, that's probably how you get a top or like do well with any deck. Not just with Vanquish or in general, just like with any deck, right? If you know your deck inside out and you know the opponent's deck inside out, well, obviously you got the advantage right there. If your opponent doesn't know his own deck and he doesn't know his opponent's deck, he's just got disadvantage. That's why when you verse a top player, let's just, let's just say I verse like the best player in the world. I should always suspect he knows what my cards do and he knows what the cards do. So it just becomes, do I draw the out or he draws the out, right? So, this deck going forward, I still will play it. I still like where it's at. I still think it's a good deck. It's one of my all-time favorites, of course. Uh, would I change it? Yeah, of course. It, yeah, maybe not maining deck some of them now because you don't you don't need to main deck it, especially with the format slightly changing and slightly being different. I played this card at the YCS because it was good in that format. It was just really good against, against like all of those decks. But now you could just like put it out and put like another hand trap or like put Frost in or Talents. You could put Chalice in, you could put Gravekeeper Inscription, depending where the format goes. Um, there's a there's a lot of different ways you can play Vanquish I think that's why the deck catches people off surprise of how many non-engine cards you can actually fit in. Because the only problem with Vanquish is, right, is, let's we'll say, you know, you need, like, the, you know, your set 15. But, like, you don't even have to play that much, like, Vanquish 
as long as you're playing Ryzen and like the main guys are like one offs off, it's not that worst thing in the world. You can play one and non engine, you know what I mean? So, moving forward with the tech into Legacy Destruction format, and hopefully the ban list does shop. I think uh, Vegas Show it will be as usual, 7 out of 10. Now, being nice saying 7 out of 10, because you know it's one of my favorite decks. Uh, it still has a rough Viking Snake Light matchup. I don't know if that deck's still going to be a thing if they get hit. Has a whole matchup, honestly, guys. It's one of the worst matchups. Not close to the Snake Eyes, it's close to the Viking constantly just. The, you just can't outgrind the Fire King stuff. But yeah, guys, I hope this video uh, helps you guys. If you guys were asking questions about the side deck or future decks or how, how can I prepare for uh, future tournaments with uh, key cards or like key decks against for my Vanquish deck against the key decks like Voices or Snake Eyes or, you know, Kashua or, you know, another deck. Runic Stun, you know, like you can main deck Cosmics for Runic Stun. And let's just say you expect more voices, the same thing. You can play Cosmic in the main, or you can play Evil in the main if you want to, like, have more board breaking, or like you can play Fuss in the main. There's a lot of different ways you can make make a shot, guys. There's, there's honestly no one way of making it. It's, uh, it's the full and the process that goes behind a deck, depending on the format and depending on the meta. But as long as you got the same key cards and the same like hand traps that adjust to the meta, it's sort of like cool, you know. Uh, I believe this deck's still good. That's just my humble opinion. Just being too nice, like a lot of popos would be like, nah, deck's really bad, you know. But I don't listen to them, you know. If I listened to them, I would have been winning probably last year with Snake Eyes. But, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable with Snake Eyes. I didn't think that I was good in the mirror, so I decided to play Vanquish Show because I was so comfortable with it. Like, really comfortable. I can literally turn my brain on every time someone mentions Vanquish Show. I can explain it. Even cards that no one plays. You know, that's that's how much I know this deck. But, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and a wonderful evening. And if it's your birthday, happy birthday to you. And I hope you guys have a good day.